Um, <laughs> okay, so how was it that you found out about us? I um, follow someone. So I work. I do this workout platform called Join Form, and I follow everyone on the team. And one of them, her name's Sarah Catherine's. That's her Instagram. I don't know her at all. I'm, yeah. And she had a um, like ask me anything on her stories. And someone was like, how do you have your clear skin? And she said weekly or like monthly facials. And then I use corrective skin cares or yeah, that's your name. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or, yeah. It's the product. Product order, corrective skincare. And then we have a product line CSLA skincare. Yeah. Same. So she said, I use those products and then just, you know, like her other tips. And I clicked on the Instagram and I was just looking through and I, I saw the before and afters and I've been I mean, we'll probably get into this, but I've just been in, like, I've tried everything and like, I don't know, it, I kind of was um, attracted to it because it didn't seem like too crazy of this like big commitment, like type of thing. Well, yeah. And, and I just was like, I might as well try. So yeah. yeah, I think just, and thank you for giving me all that like history about it, but I don't know if you, did you end up going to the website or Yelp or kind of do a little investigating or was it strictly Instagram? Strictly Instagram, a little bit of the website. Okay. So just yeah. background story on my history. Um, yeah. I had struggled with acne. So that was kind of my deal. And it was a, you know, I'd been to dermatologists and facialists. I was on Accutane and I, it was a, you know, huge insecurity and lack of self-esteem growing up, but I didn't have the tools to know. And I think, especially now it's really hard because there's so many things out there. They're like, buy this, buy this. And you don't know really what to believe. And I think what helped me the most was it's not some miracle product. Like, I mean, your gut would tell you that anyway, but right. it's, it's to me now basic common knowledge, but it's not. It's, right. it's, it's how to eat properly and why you're breaking out. And it's, it, I'm going to go through like genetics and lifestyle and food. And, you know, then we'll go into the topical because I read your um, new client questionnaire. Mm -hmm. And so I can already tell you why you might be breaking out a little bit and why it's not clearing as quickly, um, mm -hmm. just based on the things that you filled out, but we'll go through each and every okay. part of it. But yeah, I, it was until I went to an acne clinic when I was in college She's like, forget everything you've learned, forget everything you've been on. Let me just teach you. And it's more about education. Cause once you understand it, you're like, oh, okay. That makes total sense. But yeah. otherwise you're going to these places and they're like, oh yeah, yeah. Buy this here, put this on. Right. They don't tell right. you what it is. They don't tell you what the ingredients are or why it's working or how to apply it or how often, or yeah. So I'll go through all that with you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then that's, what's kind of happened <laughs> just with everything. I mean, I've always had acne and then my so I'm a incoming senior in college and my sophomore year just it blew up like crazy and the pictures I sent like my skin has gotten so much better but it was really intense hormonal acne and I remember I was doing I don't know if you know face reality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I, I I really liked it and it was good and it worked for me in high school and then I tried to do it again and I felt like no one was like I was always like close to tears when I was in these appointments and no one would just like, listen, they were just like, just do this. Don't like, just stick to it. And you're going to have clear skin. And I never felt like I had like any type of guidance throughout the process. And then kind of, I, I went on birth control and aldactone and all of that. And it did really help clear the severe acne, but then now I was going to somewhere, um, or just the OSU or Ohio state, I go to Ohio state. And I just went to their like, you know, health services. And the woman who I met with was like, oh yeah, I can prescribe like anything I asked, she'd be like, yeah, I can prescribe that. And I was just like, well, I want like some, uh, do you have any it's guidance? So it's like, cause once I go through all this stuff with you, you're like, oh, I wish somebody would have told me that. Cause I could have probably cleared a long time ago if had I known. Right. Yeah. Right. So. so I was just like, okay, I feel like I'm on my own in this. So that's why I was kind of excited about this. Okay, like, good. thank you. Yeah. Well, the face reality thing is they've got the right idea. They really mm -hmm. do. And I'll, I'll explain like why, yeah. um, but it's nice to not so much have your hand held, but, but describe, or at least educate why you're doing each of the things and your skin does 
acclimate to things. So mm -hmm. after a while, it's, it's kind of like working out at a gym. If you pick up a five pound weight after, after a while, five pound weight, isn't going to, it's the challenge that makes things change. So after the, after a while, that five pound weight, if you pick up a seven pound weight, all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm seeing a difference again. So yeah. we're, my goal is to, as negative as this might sound, I'm going to constantly irritate your skin just a little bit. Cause yeah. as we go through this, because that's, what's going to, that's when you're going to see the difference. Yeah, and then yeah. when we get you to the point where you're like, oh, I'm not, this is good. It's just prevention. Then we wean you off and prevention is super easy. It's getting you clear. That's the tough part because, yeah. and we'll, and we'll get into that because there's, there's dealing with scarring, there's dealing with discoloration, there's dealing, you know, mm -hmm. but the acne prevention, that's number one. I'm not worried about scarring. I'm not worried about the discoloration. That, that's actually the easy part. The hard part is preventing new breakouts. Mm -hmm. So that's where I, I kind of want the focus to be at this point. Yeah. And let me, are you ready? Let me go through the yeah. whole, okay. Yeah. Okay. And you don't have to remember this term, but the medical term for acne is called retention hyperkeratosis, but I'll break that down. So basically retention is holding back. Okay. Hyper is a lot and keratosis is dead skin cells. Mm, but like okay. an oversimplified version of what that means is your skin is really just stacking up and getting thicker. Okay. Yeah. And you know, when, as you get older, what happens is your skin cells slow down, right? So typically what's supposed to happen is skin falls, cells fall off, new skin develops. Mm -hmm. And it kind of does this nice little thing. That's like normal, healthy skin, but then yeah. you, you pull in the genetics and the lifestyle and all that kind of stuff. And what happens is this, they're not falling off quite as quickly. Right. Right. So what happens is your skin starts stacking up and you have, based on the photos, you have what's called comedonal acne. It's a fancy term for blackheads. Okay. So what's happening. And I could tell probably what's happening is you're washing your face and you feel all these little bumps and your bumps are down. Like your comedonal acne is here. This is your, this is your zone, right? Mm -hmm. And every once in a blue moon, you'll get one huge, crazy blow up. And that'll go away. And then another one and then another one and another. But the reason that you're, you're like, yeah, the reason that is, is because you've got all these layers, right? Mm -hmm. Of dead skin and all these little bumps, all these little comedones and breakouts underneath. So every once in a while, you're going to get this crazy zit and it's going to be this ongoing forever thing because you have layers and layers and layers of them. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do, remember when I said initially is like, I'm trying to irritate your skin, actually. I'm trying to move things. So what, and I'll get into this, but there's, there's two ways to clear you. There's using acids. You've heard of chemical peels and, mm -hmm. um, okay. So glycolic is sugar cane. Lactic is dairy. Salicylic is tree bark. Mandelic is what almond, like they're, they're all natural to begin with. A lot of companies throw a lot of junk in it, but at its most purest form, they're natural. Um, vitamin A is also an acid and you're using tretinoin. That's a version of vitamin A. Um, all acids do the same thing. Remember how I said your skin stack, it gets sticky, stacks up. It's not falling off, right? Your skin cells are getting sticky. They're sticking together. They're not. So when you throw acid on the skin cells, they unglue, mm -hmm. they attach. So like the way that I was taught is imagine like this brick, this brick wall, if you throw acid on it, it just loosens the concrete, allows the bricks to fall off. It allows yeah. things to move. So like, it's so much easier when you go to a place and they're like, oh yeah, acids are chemical peels. They peel you. Like, it's not really peeling you. What it's really doing is it's ungluing. Okay. And, and the movement of skin cells falling off, it really truly is semantics. So it's a lot easier to say, oh, it's peeling you. So it's faster to say it that way. Yeah. But if you, if you rationalize like, oh, it's moving cells. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is if you've got all these layers of skin cells and you've got these comedones here, the more dead skin that falls off, the cell, the comedones come closer to the surface to finally get out. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what acids are doing. And by the way, when I was going through the description of all the different um, types of acids, mm -hmm. all acids do the detaching. The only one that does it a little different is vitamin A acid, which is the one you're using the tretinoin. Vitamin A does detach, but it also stimulates new cells to grow. Okay. Because as you get older, your skin cells don't generate quite as quickly. And the benefit of that is the whole anti-aging thing. It gets things moving a little bit. The one downside of it, and it's not really a downside, but the one thing that's a little bit not as, I, I like to go fast. I like, I'm a little type A about this stuff. I'm like, if you're going to do it, do it. Yeah. The molecule is slightly larger 
in a vitamin A acid than it is in a glycolic or salicylic. Like glycol and salicylic is the smallest molecule. It's sharper. It just, okay. it, it detaches faster and moves faster. Where vitamin A, it's a little slower processing. Yeah. But you get the benefit of cell renewal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's, yeah. No, there's no bad or good. It's just information, right? But yeah. that's what acids do. So it makes sense. You're doing a great job. You're trying to move things. The one thing I didn't see in your routine is the other side of the spectrum, right? So there's acids. There's two things that will clear you acids. The other part is something that kills bacteria. So you've heard of sulfur products, um, benzoyl peroxides, resorcinols, right. these kill bacteria. So what's happening is you're moving cells, getting rid of dead skin, fading discoloration, moving scarring, right? Texture, all that, but you're not using anything to prevent new breakouts. So you're never going to clear, yeah. right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. So, so if you kind of yeah. add this into the mix, then, right. then you can start worrying about, uh, worrying, then you can start preventing new breakouts from forming and then you've, you've solved it. Right. But then it yeah. all depends on you and genetics and lifestyle. So it has to be like, what's good for you, which acid is best for you? How often do you apply it? Which acne medication would be best? How do you apply that? How often do you apply that? And how, you know, we have to pick and choose what product is best for you, but that's the missing ingredient. Mm -hmm. That's why you're still breaking out. Okay. Yeah. So, and another thing I wanted to ask, um, are you oily or dry right now? When you wash your face in the morning, how long does it take before you start getting oily? Two hours, oily. middle of the day, never. Yeah. Um, well today I noticed, um, probably like two hours, a little less than that. Okay. So but you're then more I, it oily feels side. really dry and then I put on moisturizer and then I'm oily. So, okay. so yeah. that happened to me. And I remember asking the same thing to the woman who cleared me back in college. I'm like, I'm oily, really oily, but then I'm not, I'm really dry. So yeah. what's happening is you're genetically, genetically, genetically. Yeah. Genetically oily. Mm -hmm. right? You have oily skin, but you're superficially drying it out using the acid. Yeah. The tretinoin yeah. that you're using. Okay. So what's happening is you keep producing the oil like you normally would, but the acid's superficially drying you out. That's why mm -hmm. you're kind of dealing with both. Yeah. Okay. So knowing that, and, and if you take anything away from this consultation at all, it's if you're oily, you're never going to clear. Yeah. Take that part up, like, because I need things moving and I need your skin a little drier temporarily, yeah. right? It's a, it's an acne thing. That's why Accutane dries you out. That's why these acids dry you out. Like any acne medication out there, it dries you out. Now there's a certain extent. I don't want you burnt. Right. But I want you to feel, yeah. you know, when you wash your face, it feels clean. Yeah. I want it to feel like that all day long which yeah. you'll like. I mean, I want it a little hydrated here and here, but I, I, I want this area to feel a little tight. It's that tight, like a dead skin cell is microscopic. You're not going to see it. Right. But if you're tight, that means dead skin cells are falling off. So I want you to kind of become a little bit more in tune to feel versus look. Okay. I used to be really insecure and self-conscious and I have really bad skin and I was oily and I had cysts and like, I was worried about this. And all I would do is look in the mirror mm -hmm. and learning this, I realized, oh, I have to just feel tight, you know, like feel a little bit like my skin's, that means skin cells are moving off. And if, as long as I medicate properly, does that make sense? Like, I want yeah. you to feel less bumpy. Look, yeah. well, looks will come, <laughs> color will fade, scarring and yeah. texture. Like, like I said, that's the easy part and we'll get there. But right now we have to focus on not having the bumps, preventing the breakouts. Okay? Yeah. I have to tell you, you yeah. saying that I just said to my friend, we were on a walk and I was like, I wash my face and I feel gross after, like I didn't wash my face. And so that's funny that you said like, you know how you feel clean and then it like goes away. So yeah. 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 Like I want you to feel like that all day. I remember hearing like, I have to be dry. And I'm like, isn't that bad? And she's like, yeah, but you're going to like it. And it's all temporary. Let's just get you clear. It's like, I, I liken it to almost like getting braces. God, it sucks having yeah. braces, right? <laughs> But yeah. once the braces come off, you're clear and then you're fine for the rest of your life. Like that's kind of where I want this to go, where it's like, okay, it's a little tight and you got to do your stuff and put the product on. And it's really not that much more work than any other thing that's out there. It, in fact, it's less because it's more common sense, like health wise and more mm -hmm. self-care than anything. 
but right. yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. So as long as you grasp, you need to be a little tight, a little drier. If you're oily, you're not going to clear. And then there's acids and benzyl, like acids and acne medications, the right combination and the right application based on you and your lifestyle. Th those are the important things. Okay. So in the morning, which cl what cleanser do you use right now? I'm assuming I you wash your face in the morning, right? Like it's, you right, wake up and yeah. I use, um, La Roche. La Roche like, or La Roche. Yeah. Roche. It's like yeah. a foaming cleanser. So I use feel that. Stripped is not the word I want to, I'm looking for. Do you feel clean and tight and fresh, like squeaky clean? Um, I would say, yeah, yes, I do. Um, okay. but I mean, just with the like drugstore face washes, I feel like they kind of all make you feel pretty much the same. Like I do. the, the reason, I'm, I've reason I'm asking is like, I'm, I'm, I, of course I'm like, I'm biased. I love my product, yeah. but I'm also one of those people. If it, if it works, use it. You know what I mean? If you love something, don't let anybody talk you out of it. I just want to make sure that what you're using is making you super, super clean so that when you do invest in, in the right acid for you or the right acne medication, that's actually penetrating through the skin cells. Right, right. Right. Because I think, again, I think of like this, I have, I have a lot of like comparisons. If you had like a plate of lasagna and you don't yeah. have like a soapy cleanser to get the grease off right. and you just rinse it with water or something that's kind of, it's not going to really clean it well enough. Mm -hmm. So if you love your cleanser, don't let me talk you out of it. But if, yeah. it, if you're not kind of, if you're like, yeah, I guess it's okay. Like I have options for you. Yeah. Well, I've never had, so this one I bought, like I didn't have it before I got it. If that makes sense. Like I will be, I'm so far I've just, this past like semester, I've just been trying different, like I'll try to finish the bottle. Mm -hmm. That's like my thing. Like I'll, I'll buy it and I'll try to get to the bottom, but then I'm like, oh, I'll try this. You give it a chance to work. That's your, that's your kind of yeah. like work. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, the fact that you're oily after two hours, I'm going to suggest something I'm and by the way, this is just a consultation. It's just, I'm talking, right? So I don't want you to feel like any obligation or any, you know, need yeah, to yeah. do anything, right? Either way, I'm going to follow up with an email and say, Hey, these are the things, these are the things I suggested. If you feel like doing it, just click on the link or I can do that for you, whatever, but it's all suggestions. I can also work what you're currently using into the program. If you're like, Nope, don't talk me out of that. I love it. And I, yeah. we can always work around that, but, um, I appreciate that, but yeah, I mean, it's funny. Cause when I first started doing it, I had, I had bought the whole line of Clinique at the time. And I had tried again, everything. This is back in, I was 17, 18. I don't remember somewhere around there, mm -hmm. but I walked in and I'm like, don't give me this. Don't give me this. And I just bought Clinique. And she's like, okay, well, here's the thing. It's not working. You're clearly still breaking out. So I want to yeah. shake things up put it in a brown paper bag, put it under your sink. It's there to go back to if you want to, you know, yeah. and it kind of eased my mind. Cause I had just, I spent a lot of money as a college student, you know, just like buying all that stuff. So, um, this is always, I always have it in stock. There's no rush to do anything. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. But I wanted to give you, um, I'll show you. So I have three different cleansers. I'll give you the middle one first. Okay. This is a green facial shampoo. Okay. This is our, I guess this is our most purchased cleanser. That's a bad way to say it, but it's, this is the one that, that sells the most just because it's for combination skin, okay. not oily, not dry kind of thing. Um, and it leaves you feeling clean and fresh. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you have really sensitive skin, really dehydrated skin, there's the sensitive facial shampoo. Yeah. Okay. And this one is good. It just, it doesn't leave you feeling stripped or dry or anything. It just cleans you really nicely. And then on the opposite end, there's the extra strength facial shampoo for really, really oily skin. Okay. okay. Um, I use the extra strength. I like feeling like, like super tight because I'm such yeah. oily skin still. It's getting drier as I'm getting out. Like I'm almost 50. So it's starting, it's starting to get into the dryer, which I kind of like, except mm -hmm. around my eyes, but um. I like feeling tight because I know in 15, 20 minutes, I'm going to start getting oily anyway. Okay. Right. Yeah. And summer, I need a little bit more of this. You can always kind of like move things around, but I think based on what you're saying, it would be more the green for you kind of in the middle. Okay. Um, yeah. That would be my suggestion if you did anything at all. Um, but that would be in the morning. 
Okay. okay. And then you say you wash your face and then put a moisturizer on, correct? Right. And yes. then tell me about that moisturizer. So it's this one. I actually just got it. It's, um, yeah, I felt like I went through it really quickly. Um, it's good, but this, again, it was like, what did I have? Oh, I use CeraVe, the big like tub. Cause everyone oh, told me to have. Okay. So I have this, okay. CeraVe PM. Okay. You, of, you know how there's CeraVe AM and CeraVe PM yeah. and then the big tub for the body. Right. Yeah. I like CeraVe PM a lot. Okay. Okay. P the PM one is like this little, it's blue and white. It's like seven yeah. or seven dollars. Okay. It's this light, fluffy, gelish moisturizer. Okay. And I like the PM better than the AM. The AM has sunscreen in it and it feels greasy to me. I don't like it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I like the feel like almost actually not almost all of my products are, I like water-based light whipped yeah. gel. Right. Yeah. Me too. Um, I also like even, even my moisturizers, they're, they're watery, but they're, they're super concentrated and hydrating. So you don't feel that greasy feel because yeah. most, all of my products are specifically focused on acne prone, even if you're anti-aging, you know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. it won't break you out. So I do like the CeraVe PM. If you wanted to go, Hey, I don't want to invest a lot right now. And it's, I can buy it at CVS. I like the PM, the okay. CeraVe PM. That's a good one. Um, no. yeah. Um, alter, mm -hmm. alternately, alternative, alternatively. Yeah. <laughs> we have two different moisturizers in the future. If you ever decide to do it. Um, one is, if you can see it, the antioxidant moisturizer. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then one is the hyaluronic moisturizer. Okay. So our hyaluronic moisturizer is, have you heard of hyaluronic? It's like this big, yeah. whatever. do you know what it means? you know what it is? Hydrating. That's I mean, I it is, say. it is. Um, yeah. but to give it like a brief example, obviously not, not fillers, but I'm sorry, not Botox, but fillers, your body mm. naturally produces something called hyaluronic acid. But as you get older, you produce less of it okay. and not when they're doing Botox, but when they're injecting you with fillers, they're injecting you with hyaluronic acid. Oh, okay. Okay. So what's happened, it, it, it works like a sponge. Okay. Like if it's dry, nothing happens, but if you get it wet, it goes, oh. right. Okay. So that's why they're injecting hyaluronic into you because like, if you Google search to the answer of what is hyaluronic, it would say something like it carries a thousand times its weight in water. And I don't even know what that means. Like, I'd rather just think of it as like, it's a moisturizer that expands when water hits it. That's all it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So that's why it's a really good ingredient. And this is, it's more fluffy. I think of this as like marshmallowy light and mm, fluffy, yeah. um, a little bit more matte. It doesn't have a shine kind of thing. And then the antioxidant has vitamin C and niacinamide. So vitamin C brightens and evens color. Um, and niacinamide is vitamin B. So it's okay. a good, it's good, um, product inside moisturizers. This one is a little bit more silky, has a little bit of a shine, but it's slippy. It's light, very okay. thick and hydrates really well without making you feel greasy. Anyway, those are the two moisturizers. Okay. In the meantime, you could go and get CeraVe PM, see if you like the feel of that. Cause these are very similar as far as feel like, okay. okay. These are just different yeah. ingredients, but CeraVe would, I like the feel of that. Okay. Um, so in the morning, I'd prefer you like wash your, when you wash your face, use tempid water, not hot, not cold. Right. Okay. Take your time. That was something that I didn't do when I had acne. I was like, I was like hot water, scrub it. You know, just, I was a little harsher than I needed to be. And the way that I was taught was like, just baby your skin, start to baby it, knowing that you've got layers and layers and layers, right? And your breakouts are down here. They're not on the surface anyway. So yeah. the harder you are on the surface, the worse off it's going to be for you. And you're going to get red and irritated and it's not doing anything for underneath anyway. Gotcha. Right. Yeah. So start to baby your skin, take your time. And because your breakouts are here, you'll wash your face and then rinse up and out. And that might okay. seem like it's going to get water everywhere. Cause, but this was my issue too. And okay. so it's important. A lot of times when you wash your face, you don't realize a lot of the suds and the makeup and the grime and the dirt, it just kind of pools under here without physically removing it. Yeah. And then yeah. patting dry gently. Okay. Okay. And if you tend to break out or have any kind of like oil, I know it seems silly, but 
really take your time. Get it like get in there. Yeah. Okay. Like I said, think of a, a lasa plate of lasagna. Unless you're getting that corner, it's still gonna have a little bit of grease in there, you know? Right, right. Okay. Yeah, because I'm like breaking out on my neck right now. And I'm like, this is so gross. Like acne, acne tends to migrate, like mine started forehead T's almost do. And then it moved to the cheeks and then it moves to the chest and then it moves to the back. And it could, like, that's kind of the migration process. And so now that it's starting to kind of trickle down, you just want to, you're here now. So we'll, we'll stop it. I'm not worried about it. Okay. okay. So you just kind of, and then pat dry gently. Have you heard of icing your skin? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I, I did that with face reality. That was part good. Of the problem. Yeah. Did they explain why you're icing? Um, not really, but I just assumed like, you know, for inflammation, you ice like when yeah. you're, yeah, that's exactly why it, okay. it brings down redness and inflammation, like a sports injury does the same thing. Yeah. Um, especially good for cysts, like those okay. big breakouts out of nowhere, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. It will also, because it's so cold, it, it almost, I wouldn't say it doesn't kill the top layer. It compromises the top layer of skin because it's freezing, right? So it's yeah. essentially a freezer burn. Mm. So this slight burn is kind of like an exfoliation. Okay. That's so if, yeah. So if you ice right before putting on your moisturizer or ice right before putting on your acne medication or what it, you'll actually get a deeper penetration of that medication or moisturizer. Okay. That's good okay. to know. Yeah. I, I mean, these are like things I'm like, oh yeah, it kind of makes sense. It is a burn. It's ice. Yeah. It's freezer, right. And then yeah. if you put meat in the freezer, it preserves, it's like an anti-aging thing. So it's just a pain in the butt to do ice. Like it's literally like, so in the morning, every morning you cleanse, you ice and don't, you just don't want to hold it in one spot for a long period of time because yeah. it'll burn like heat well. Right. So you just keep, as long as you keep the ice moving, like for instance, every once in a while, I'll get a not up there, actually down here. Every once in a while, I'll get a cyst or some kind of breakout here. You can get it on that spot and then move it and then get it on that spot and then move it. Like, just don't hold, resist the urge to hold it there. Cause then what'll happen is it'll burn mm -hmm. that spot. And not only will the breakout, yeah. look, like it'll start to go away, but then you've burned the skin tissue and then it's turned dark and red. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you'll keep okay. moving. You can do a plain piece of ice. It's free. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying that because there's gimmicky things out there and I have one of the gimmicky things. It's called an ice pop, right? Oh yeah. Okay. You just fill it with water. Um, it's funny. I was talking to a friend about this. I'm like, yeah, but like, I'm so basic. It's free. I could just use an ice. She's like, yeah, but your hands are nice and warm and it's totally gimmicky, but it makes me want to ice, you know, yeah. like it makes yes. me want to do it. It's fun. And I'm like, all right, if you want to. Yeah. So for me, yeah. like I, I just use an ice cube when I, you know, I don't do it that much anymore because I've gotten lazy, but to, until you get clear, right. Be good about it. Okay. okay. So you cleanse you ice, you pat the skin dry in the morning. And I'm recapping this in an email. So don't stress out, but you're going to forget, okay. <laughs> um, your moisturizer well, regardless of what type it is. Right. I only want you to use it where you need it. Oh, okay. okay. So if you're feeling a little dry here and you're feeling a little dry here, which are the places that the skin is thinner in general, just mm -hmm. put it where you need it because you okay. have oily skin and you're acne prone. So like in 10 minutes, you're going to get oily anyway. And I'm trying to make this cleaner and drier in, in this time period, you know? Yeah, yeah. So cleanse ice, put a little moisturizer where you need it. You're done in the morning. Okay. okay. Do you wear makeup? I do. Yeah. And especially because like I am breaking out. So then I feel even more inclined to wear it like for work and stuff. So keep wearing it. Keep wearing it. Cause I, the way that I, I believe that if you don't wear makeup, cause you're like, oh, it's going to be better for my skin. While it's true, you're going to be so insecure. Like, oh, everybody's looking at my zits. And then you're going to, it's right. the stress that's going to break you out. So yeah. just for right now, wear what you need to wear and know that okay. eventually you're going to start to clear and just wear less. Like okay. I used to wear thick, heavy cream. And then as I started to clear, I used cream where I needed it and then powder everywhere else. And then as I started to clear further, just powder. And then as I started to clear further, I'm like, ah, I'm just going to put a little dot, a little, stuff. you know what I mean? Yeah. You, you, it's more, it'll become just a habit. You're not yeah. putting it on for any reason anymore. Once you're clear. Right. And, right. You'll, and you'll get to that point. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's in the morning. And then do you exercise or sweat during the day? I do. Okay. And, what time and what do you do? So usually I like, will wake up 
wash my face, do that, eat breakfast, whatever. And then I usually work out like before noon or around noon. And then after I've never known, do you wash your face after, or do you wait till like your nighttime routine or when you shower next? Like, okay. So, so hearing that, so I'm assuming you wake up, you get ready for the day, you put your makeup on. And so I don't, Oh, you don't have, I don't wear makeup. Like if I'm working out or doing my, like if I'm just home, like tonight I work at five. So I'll put on makeup, like I'll wash my face. Okay. Put on moisturizer, my makeup, everything. But like before I work out, I never wear makeup when I'm working out Good. or anything. I mean, yeah. if you can avoid it. Um, yeah. In an ideal world, mm-hmm. you wouldn't have makeup on before you work out. You'd have clean face before you wake up, work out, and then you wash immediately after. Okay. 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 We don't okay. live in a world where it's that easy. But to give you an example, this morning, I, what did I do? Oh, I was a little lazy this morning, but I sat on the computer. I didn't wash my face. I was doing a little bit of work. And then I'm like, oh, I'm going to work out before the virtual, right? Then I washed my face, worked out, and immediately jumped in the shower. So you probably are thinking like, I don't know if I really want to wash my face before I'm about to take a shower 30 to 40 minutes later, but it's beneficial. I, you, you froze right after oh, you said, I'm I sorry. want to work out before the virtual. No, okay. 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 Um, I washed my face right before I worked out. Okay. I did a video at home for 30 minutes. Okay. And then immediately after I jumped in the shower. Okay. Most people would be like, I just don't want to wash my face before that 30 minutes. Like what's 30 minutes. I just feel cleaner. Okay. To me, I'd rather be clean and more important. Like, let's say you go to work and you have makeup on. If all you can do and you only have time to work out and that's it then it's more important you wash right after. It's more important you shower right after. If you had to choose, more important that you're clean after a workout. Okay, that's But in in an ideal world, if you had the time, do it in the morning and do it, wash before and after. Okay, yeah. Because what's going to happen is ultimately you're going to end up washing four times a day. Yeah. Right? But that's okay right now. Okay. I did know. I never knew like if uh, I should or shouldn't. You know, and, and the truth is people aren't given as much guidance or advice because what i'm what i'm going to tell you second is i much rather you be cleaner on the whole right Mm -hmm. than having to throw a ton of medication on your face because it it, again it's semantics it's what people are telling you right so some people will say oh don't wash your face four times a day that's really bad for you but you have to put three times a day acid and two times a day acne medication like that's so much worse just wash your face just be clean Put yeah. on moisturizer where you need it. I'd rather you be cleaner than have to compensate by putting medication on. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's just, again, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm saying that's what I believe in. Okay. okay. Yeah. I, I don't want to tell anybody they're wrong. You know, it's just, yeah. that's just works for me. Um, okay, so that's during the day. Mm-hmm. And then at night, according to the paperwork, you wash tretinoin, tretinoin, I'm not saying that right, and then moisturizer. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Right. Same, same cleanser, same moisturizer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes the, I put aqua for like on my drier spots. Okay. I love that actually. I don't yeah. mind. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and you put the tretinoin, bef- um, I'm sorry, you put the aqua for on before the tretinoin? No, after. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll hold that thought. Okay. Okay. So your tretinoin, is it a cream or a gel? It's a cream. Okay. So the cream has something called, oh, I forgot the name of it. There's an ingredient in a cream. I don't know why they put it in there because tretinoin for the most part is for anti-aging and acne, right? That they, they kind of, and scarring and discoloration because it's peeling agent. Um, mm, I'm so I'm, I'm bummed with myself. I don't remember the name, but there's an ingredient in it that's meant for binding, like a binding property. It's not meant for skin related at all. It's meant for cosmetic binding. So when you put the tretinoin on, it sticks, it stays Mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Whatever that ingredient is that I can't think of right now, that tends to break people out who have acne prone skin. That's why I was asking you between a cream and a gel, which one do you have? So the gel doesn't have that ingredient in it. The cream does. Um, I'll follow up with an email with that ingredient. Cause just cause it bothers me that I can't think of it right now, okay. um, but it doesn't matter. I'm not worried about that part right now. Okay. When you wash your face again at night, you'll take your time. 
your eyes, pat skin gently, take the aquaphor, mm -hmm. put a tiny bit in the areas that you need it first. Okay. The reason that is, is because nothing gets past aquaphor. Right. So if like, I'll tell clients who are like this area, really, really dry here or here, right? Cause the skin is thinner in these areas, right? Right. So in these areas, I'll tell them, you know what, if you're really dry here and here, put a little aquaphor here, you know, wash and dry your hands, then put the tretinoin because it won't get in that spot. Yeah. If you do the tretinoin first, if you're like, oh, okay, I put a light thing, put a tretinoin and, and then I put the aquaphor let's, this is a hypothetical. Let's say you stop the tretinoin right about here. It's, it has water in it. It's a cream, right? It will migrate further than where you put it inside the skin cells. And then when, by the time you put the aquaphor on, it traps it. Oh, so if you yeah. put the aquaphor first, it won't get past. It just, okay. It's past aquaphor. Like that's just kind of my yeah. thing. Right. Um, and then do you do the tretinoin every night? Yes. Okay. So you're missing the key ingredient and that's either a benzoyl peroxide sulfur or resource and all I have you, are you allergic to benzoyl peroxide? Mm -mm. One in every hundred thousand are, I have something in case you are, but most people are not. Yeah. They might burn themselves and think they're allergic, but they're not. Yeah. Um, I would recommend, I know you've probably used a benzoyl peroxide in the past, but these are a little different. Um, 5% benzoyl. Okay. It is water-based whipped into a gel. Most benzyls are creams. So okay, yeah. it's really light and fluffy and watery almost, right? So okay. the molecule is really small and penetrates faster. You can see it's also white. Most benzyl peroxides are kind of yellowy. Yeah. So yeah. I had her take the color out. Like there's a, always colors and additives and fragrance and all that kind of stuff. It has mm -hmm. a lot less additives to it. And then to give an example, I have a lot of clients who are like, oh, I've used 10% benzyl. Can you just give me something stronger? Five's not going to work, right? Yeah. But again, another hypothetical, let's pretend this is not, this is something different, but let's pretend this is 15% or let's say it's 10% benzyl peroxide sold over the counter. Okay. And this is my 5%. Which one's stronger? Most people are going to think the 10% is stronger than the five, except right. this 10%, there is 10% in here, right? Mm -hmm. Except there's so much color, so much fragrance, so much preservative put in there because of the shelf life at CVS or wherever it's being sold, yeah. right? So that 10% starts to minimize. And then compare it, and, and it's a cream. So the molecule is larger and takes longer to penetrate. And then the, the opposite end, right? You've got a 5% that doesn't have a lot of color or fragrance or preservatives or adjunct, and it's water-based whipped into a gel. So this one is more pure at 5%. This one is yeah. going to be less strong at 10. That is so interesting. Yeah. yeah and I wouldn't have known that unless she explained yeah. it to me. So yeah. does that make sense though? Like yeah. the difference? Okay. Yeah. So this 5%, and I'm going to show you how to apply it. This is not the product, but it's just thicker. So I could show you on the Zoom. See how much product that is? Yeah. That's like how much you use. It's P size, P size, yeah. one, right? Somebody said pencil eraser, and I like that better actually. So pretend oh, yeah. pencil eraser size. Um, this is how much you would use for your entire face. Okay. Most people, and this is what I used to do, if I'd have a big zit here, I'd put that entire amount on that one zit because in my head I'm like, oh, kill it, burn it, get yeah. rid of it, and it will, it will get rid of the zit much faster. But then I burned that spot. And it's made me very red in that spot. And that red mark mm -hmm. will last far longer than the zit would have. And then I've got a zit, like a, a red mark on my face for like a month and a half. Right. Yeah. So what I prefer you to do instead is take, and then it's not preventative. I'm only, yeah. if I'm only putting it in spots I'm breaking out, then I'm not doing anything to prevent. Right. So you'll take this much, get messy with it. Okay. And Remember how I said your eye corners, your nose corners, and your mouth corners are the thinnest parts of your face. Mm -hmm. You'll start at the forehead and go outside in. Okay. And when you're almost done and there's nothing left in your, or you think there's nothing left in your hands, go like this. 
Okay. That's where you're breaking out, right? So the reason I put it there and I make a joke, it's almost like petting a cat backwards. It feels really weird to do it this way, right? Yeah. Most people put things on this way. Yeah. And that's fine if it's like hydration, right? But if it's a, an acne medication or if it's an acid, you're initially putting it in the one area that's already drier because the skin is thinner. So yeah. you have to put it on opposite because the skin is thicker and can handle more on the outside. And by the time you go to the inside where it's drier, you're going to automatically get less without intending to do it that way, you know? Yeah. And because you break out here, there's whatever's little's left in your, you're covering those bases. What you don't want to do, like, I know you have breakouts here, but if you put this product here, the skin here is so thin and delicate you will burn and it's not a fun burn. Like in, in the corners here and the corners here, like it, it almost gets like a lizard skin itchiness and raw and red because the skin yeah. is so delicate. So you'll have to almost trust putting it like this and going like this. You're like, okay, I'm good, I'm done. Okay. And then wash your hands. And remember for, for my stuff, it's not like it's a cumulative process. A little mm -hmm. bit often will do so much more for you than like, oh my God, I'm, this is what I used to do. Oh my God, I'm so broken out. Tons of product. Yeah. And I yeah. burned myself and it's good because mm -hmm. the zits went away, but then I burned myself and I can't medicate for like four or five days because I'm so dry. Right. And then by not medicating for four or five days, I break out. It's like this yeah. cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when you do this, it's just super light thin coats. And what I would recommend now, this is where I go back to the acid. Remember how your vitamin A, I'm like, I, I dig it. It's great. It's anti-aging. It's just a little bit slower mm -hmm. because according to the form, you've been breaking out for a while and there are, they are comedonal and they're all along here. I kind of want something a little sharper if you're open to it. Yeah, I am. <laughs> This is our fresh correction pads. Fresh. Okay. So this is salicylic and glycolic acid. 10% glycol, 2% salicylic. I mean, it's like, you've seen these oxy, yeah. Thomas Roth. They've all got like the same idea, acid pads. Yeah. So what you would do is start at the forehead and go outside in. Okay. And you avoid the eyes, nose, and mouth corners, just like you would with the benzol. Yeah. Okay. So what I would have you do again, this is just a hypothetical and I'll follow up with the email. You'd wash your face in the morning. Okay. Ice, pat the skin dry, put a little moisturizer where you need it, wear makeup, enjoy your life. You come mm -hmm. home. If you have time, wash your face, work out. It's great for stress. And I'll talk about lifestyle in a second. Shower, do whatever you do. Nighttime, you cleanse, ice, put a little moisturizer where you need it. Morning and night are the same. The only times we're doing something different, again, it's these two products, like benzoyl acne medication, acid. I would have you do the uh, pads on Saturday or Sunday okay. and do the benzoyl on Wednesday. Oh, just those two days? Just wow. those two days. Now here's <laughs> why. Because you're gonna be like, that's not gonna do anything. Well, first, it's stronger, <laughs> right? It's stronger yeah. than what you can get over the counter. Okay. You're also using a cleanser that's making you feel a little squeakier and cleaner. Mm -hmm. You're also icing twice a day, which is a natural exfoliant. Mm -hmm. So you're already doing so much without knowing it that your skin's already gonna start to improve by using less product. Okay. Okay. And that's what I would have you do initially every Wednesday, every Sunday, right? Okay. Then after about a week, two weeks, three weeks, you're going to be like, I can handle more, right? You, you get a little tight and a little dry at first, just really because you're washing a little bit more probably and because you're icing and all that. But after a few weeks, you're going to be like, I think I can handle more. If that's the case, you'll do pad one, I'm sorry, benzol one night, nothing the next, pad one night, nothing the next, benzol night off, pad a night off, benzol night okay. off, pad a night off. That goes well for you for about a week or two, three, four. I don't know. It just depends. Everyone's skin's different, right? We don't, we won't know until we get there, but when you're ready to move on to the next step, mm -hmm. benzoyl pad, benzoyl pad, benzoyl pad, benzoyl pad, every other night. Okay. So uh, yeah. just to give you an example, you'll never need to get there. My skin was so bad when I was younger. There was a time I was doing pad or it was a different acid at the time, but I was using acid and benzoyl peroxide three to four times a day. Oh gosh. You will never need to get there. Yeah. But no, there's always another level I can take you to. Okay. 
It's just people don't challenge their skin well enough. They're like, yeah. this is what I was told to do. Yeah. But in the that's why people are walking around with acne. Like they're just not clearing quick enough and not completely enough. Right. But I need to get you clear to not break out. Then and then as your skin cells are falling off and you're feeling tight, your your color is automatically becoming more even, right? Yeah. Because the, because the cells are falling off. And so uh, things are bright. Most of the discoloration you have is superficial anyway. It's not like it all goes all the way down to the blood layer. It's in the first few layers of skin, right? So the more detaching yeah. and regenerating and all that kind of stuff, your skin's automatically going to improve just by using the products that are turning the cells over at a faster rate than they are normally due to genetics. Yeah. Okay. So there's all that. Okay. Do you have any questions about that so far? I guess my only question so you're pretty much saying I have my this is a tretinoin one I just got and it's like pretty it's like the strongest one I feel like so you just would say put this in the oh, brown bag all right thank you so much for clearing that up because I didn't touch that subject oh, yeah I, know, I want you to still you can still use that we can work that into the routine because remember even though it's another type of acid it does a different job okay but we yeah. could have you do and I can write this in the routine. We could have you do benzyl Mondays, your tretinoin on Wednesday, and this acid on Saturday, right? So okay. at least they're evenly spaced out. My gut, though, if I want, because I want to clear you pretty fast, yeah. I would have you do Wednesday benzyl, Sunday pad, and just do that for two to three weeks. Okay. Then once we get things moving a little bit, then we introduce the vitamin A back in more for cell rejuvenation and anti-aging. I think for me, more important than anti-aging for you it, it, right now yeah, is let's get you clear of acne. Yeah. Let's get the scarring yeah. improved. So I'd rather, like, I'm not saying it's not like, don't do it. I'm saying just, you know what, let's, let's make you feel better when you wash your face right now. Yeah. And then we'll I, get to the vitamin A. That's like all I feel like I just, I've been needing is just some like, some like, you know, background where it's like, or knowledge, like, you know, and yeah. that's what I've, I appreciate. So yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. And, but thank you for bringing that up. Cause I, it went over my head. Oh, so no. uh, but thank you. Okay. Yeah. So that's the product. That's the light. That's basically how challenging, how to do the ice. And again, I'm going to write this whole, like, you're going to get this email and you're gonna be like, Oh, this is so, <laughs> but at least everything is written. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I'll have clickable links because I have like YouTube. I'm just going to have to work on that too. I have to do new videos and stuff like that because those are old, but um, they still work. Mm -hmm. The other part of it is basic lifestyle. I saw you do this a couple of times. Yeah. Try not to, because yeah. this is where you're breaking out, right? It's more habit. Um, I got in the habit of not touching my face at all. I get grossed out now touching like so if I do, if I have to do it, I'll go like this, you know, just make sure my clothes are clean. Like a little, like I do weird things like that. Or if somebody touches my face, I get a little weird. Don't get weird about it, but like, just be aware, start to, yeah. start to notice how often you touch. Um, do you pick? When yeah, you bad. I've gotten yeah. in such a bad habit. Cause I think because I'm breaking out, mm -hmm. like when I'm clear, I'm always like, I don't touch, I don't touch my chest. I don't ever pick, but when I'm just like, when it's this cycle, it's just like, I'm, I've right, been so the, in the good bad. news is we'll get you clear faster so that you pick less. Yeah, yeah. and that's exactly why you're picking because they're there. Yeah, yeah. So you won't you won't break out as much. Now, having said all that, if you're at that point where you have to pick, have to, there's this like you're not going to go out with a big huge white head on your face. I'm going to tell you how to do it better. Okay. Yeah. If you have to, but I'm not saying pick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. Um. First, wait as long as you possibly can. Okay. Okay. Remember how I said, you've got all those layers. You've got the comedone down here, right? What happens with that little tiny blackhead, you know, those big, huge ones that are pussy and blow up. Yeah. That started as a comedone that started as a little tiny blackhead a week ago. Yeah. But then you got stressed out and got your period and ate a lot of junk and you know what I mean? Like things happened and then it blew up. So it, it formed from the same zit. Have you ever noticed when you medicate really well, if you don't touch it, that big, huge thing, it kind of goes down yeah. a little bit, right? Yeah. It's still there, but it goes down because that, that white pus that you think is the zit, let's say you go for it. You're like, oh, I got the zit. It's gone. Yeah. And then the next morning it's back. Yeah. Because you got out the pus, you got out the infection. That zit is actually 
still at the bottom in a little tiny core grain of sand way at the bottom. Mm, That's yeah. the actual zit. So unless you get that core out, you're still going to get that reoccurring zit. So what I would recommend is wait till as long as you possibly can, then wait one more day. I kind of make okay. a joke when I say that, right? Because just, just wait as long as you possibly can. Because the longer you go and the better you medicate and the longer you medicate, you're actually solidifying the core so mm -hmm. that when it finally comes out, it's done and over with. Otherwise you get that reoccurring zit and then you scar every time. Right. Right. Okay. So that's one way. The other way is if you're going to pick, go in the direction of the hair growth. Example, hair, your hair here is growing up and out, right? Cause your eyebrows, like mm -hmm. you'll look visibly at your, at your eyebrows and they're kind of going like this. And then your hair grows down like this and grows like, so look at the direction of the hair growth where okay. this it is and try to get it in that direction, hair um, pores are not completely straight up and down. So most people do it as if their pores are straight up and down and that can scar you too. Okay. So yeah. like in our office, when we do extractions, we don't go straight up and down. We look at the direction of the hair growth and that's how we extract. Gotcha. Okay. Um, icing will make them solidify faster. Okay. But like I said, you're going to start to clear. You won't be inclined to pick as often. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it back to the whole washing and being harsh on your skin. Yours, it's down here anyway. Yeah, yeah. Wait till it gets a little closer if you're going to do it. And by that time it's going to be solidified and you're gonna be like, I'm not going to pick, it's going to come out on its own. It's like, like you just keep medicating, you know, yeah. you'll find, I don't know if this happens to you. You ever break out on your back? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You ever wash your back in the shower? All of a sudden, like this little roly poly comes out and it's a little, yes. Yeah. That's a core. That's okay. a perfect solid core. <laughs> Those are the same funny. things that are here. Yeah. But we just don't wait for them to fall out. Right. Right. Yeah. So okay. If you wait long enough, you'll wash your face and all of a sudden you'll be like, oh, little cork came out. <laughs> you just have to have the patience and it's hard to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That makes total sense. Um, okay. Food. Um, the only thing that'll really break you out as far as food is concerned is salt. Okay. Specifically iodized salt. Okay. okay. So you said you have a clean diet. That's great. Don't be paranoid about any food at all. Don't be paranoid about iodized salt. If even like healthy food, like uh, asparagus, right. Or first of all, that has higher concentrations of salt. Who cares? Drink more water, help flush it out. Okay. I, I just don't want you to stress about it because inevitably I get the client who's like, so I heard that X breaks me out and then they don't do anything. And then the stress of that is going to break somebody out. Yeah. Stress okay. is the number two thing that breaks people out. The number one is genetics. You can't do anything about genetics, but stress is the number two. So yeah. try to stay in the middle. Okay. Don't, don't, don't cut it out completely. Don't do a ton. Just if you're going to do it, do it, have a little bite of something, something and drink water and flush it and be on with your day. You know, okay. um, you know, a lot of people will say, Oh, chocolate breaks me out or greasy or fried food. Um, just to give you an example, like a chocolate thing. Somebody will, again, hypothetical, I'm going to get my period. I'm like, oh, I want chocolate so bad. And then I'll have like tons of chocolate cake. And then I'll break out afterwards. I'm like, oh, it's the chocolate cake. Yeah. But I didn't consider a couple of other things that are happening, right? If I ingest a lot of chocolate, my insulin levels spike, mm -hmm. then they drop. And then it's actually hormones that are breaking me out and stress yeah. that's breaking me out. It probably has nothing to do with chocolate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So like I said, if you're going to get your period and you enjoy chocolate, have a piece of chocolate, have a slice of cake, just don't stress over it. And then when you come off of it, come off of it slowly, drink your water, start exercising. Don't, you know, just try to, like I said, try to be in the middle. Don't stress over it. Okay. Uh, what else can I tell you? Don't touch your face. As far as washing your hair, um, do you wash your hair every day, every other day, twice a week, once a week, twice a week. Okay. Two to three. Okay. And you're not really breaking out over here, right? Well, no, but like, I do feel like what's funny when you said go, like start to go from the outside in, cause I feel like that will help. I do feel some, sometimes like along, but that could also have, like, I haven't been washing my face after working out. Cause I feel all like I shouldn't. It's all of it. It's probably, right. yeah. So maybe what you can do, if you don't have to wash your hair all the time, just keep it, keep it where, where it is, but maybe at night you can wear your hair in a loose ponytail on the top of your head or a loose bun. Okay. Um, 
that way you're not sleeping on your hair, right? Gotcha. Uh, we use white pillowcases so mm -hmm. there isn't a lot of color and dye and then use fragrance-free fabric softeners or fragrance-free tie detergent or all free and clear stuff without a lot of junk in it to, to yeah. for your laundry. Um, I'm trying to think of what other things I can come up with that I know about that I'm blanking on. Do you have any other questions? Oh, body stuff. Okay, you said you're breaking out a little bit. Yeah. You can use cleansers in the shower. Um, we do have a scrub that's amazing for acne on the back also. It's a gentle polishing scrub. Okay. Um, if you're a person who does scrubs, some people aren't and they're lazy and they don't want to do it. In that case, don't do it. But okay. this is a, this scrub has polyethylene beads. They're man-made, so they're completely symmetrical in size and shape. The reason that's important is because... Again, like I said, when I was younger, I used to like go crazy because in my head, I'm like, get rid of it. just the harsher, the better. But what's happening is you're making little tiny microscopic scratches on the skin by putting pressure down that the scrub, the scrub itself is just about polishing. It's just rolling on the surface of the skin that will help move dead skin. Think of it as polishing. So if I'm scrubbing hard in the long run, I'm actually creating more dead skin because I'm scratching. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So this is good in the shower. There's also a mask. I think, I think the scrub and the mask are kind of more extra credit. It'll get you clear faster, right? Mm -hmm. If you do it, it's just not as important as the basics. Right. When would you do them? Um, yeah. Good question. So you can do, remember how I said, like, you're just not pushing hard with the scrub. You're just being super gentle. You right. would, you, it's gentle enough. You could do it every night. You'd cleanse first. Then scrub the second time. gently rinse mm -hmm. and then ice you could do it every night you could i i'm again i'm a little lazier now than i used to be but i used to keep this in the shower okay this cleanup is easy and and i could do it on my back i could do it on my chest you know as long as it's gentle yeah okay. and then the mask you would do um once to twice a week okay um and the mask is a it's a biological mask it also has a little bit of vitamin a and c let me where is the mask? i don't think i brought it I forgot to bring it home, but it's a hydrating mask. It more, it's calming and sedating okay, more than anything. And that's great for acne prone skin too. If you do get breakouts. If you did that, like once a week, it wouldn't be on one of the nights that I did the pads of it. Then I prefer not, but you can, yeah. uh, I can write yeah. that in your routine too, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, I was doing it like three or four times a day and I did mask a lot and it doesn't, it doesn't, like I said, it's, it's sedating. But um, it's not necessary to do it on the same night. You would do it on a different night. Make it simple. Okay. I mean, really, it truly, it's it's what night are you going to take a bath or do laundry and have extra time? Yeah. You can right. put it on, leave it on for 20, 30 minutes, not think about it, and then rinse it off and do whatever you're meant to do that night, whether okay. it's a pad, benzol, a moisturizer, or nothing. doesn't matter. Okay. It's just whatever night you have more time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's other things I can tell you. It it might seem like a lot, but really at the end of the day, you're just drinking a lot of water, eating clean and healthy, taking care of yourself. You're cleaner more on the whole than having to medicate a lot. You're actually only medicating twice a week at first. Otherwise you're just cleansing, icing and using a little moisturizer where you need it twice a day. That's okay. it. Um, it just becomes increasingly more as time goes by, but that's what clears you faster. Gotcha. No. Yeah. I, I honestly, it doesn't, it doesn't overwhelm me. Like it excites me because it is okay. one of the most, like straightforward, simpler things I've heard. I guess one question um, that we didn't talk about a lot is if my skin is really related to like, I mean, what I've been told is I have hormonal acne. Mm -hmm. This still, you like have no doubt it still is like good for that you know? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because it doesn't matter necessarily why you're breaking out. Right? Okay. So okay. it could be, you're not eating properly, or it could be hormones, or it could be genetics, or okay. it could be lifestyle, or it could be sun. You know, I could give you all the different reasons you could be breaking yeah. out, right? It's the challenging of the skin that clears it. It's turning cells over at a faster rate that clears you. It's medication to prevent future breakouts. Mm -hmm. We just have to match the product to you and what's yeah. challenging. Like if it's, if it's a hormonal thing, right. We mm -hmm. have just have to match the product to that. Yeah. 
Okay. And I don't have a doubt that we can get it. Yeah. It's just, I, I'd like to go slower Mm -hmm. so that you don't burn. Obviously people get a little crazy over this stuff and they're like, Oh my God, I want it results right away. But that's the whole reason they got red and burnt to begin with Mm -hmm. nice and slow, even incremental stages every week. You kind of reassess, Hey, can I handle more? Can I handle more? And you just add a little bit more at a time. And that, that clears you longer, more permanently in the end, more maintenance, you get to maintenance so much faster by just doing lots and light, even things rather than fix the immediate today. Like if you had two big zits here, I want you to pretend you don't. And you just put a light thin coat twice a week and just like, just trust you'll get there rather than killing and burning these two zits and then having to not medicate because you've just burned your face. Right. Right. Okay. It might might help you with the immediate, but it won't help you a week. Yeah. That's kind of felt how I felt where I was with the whole like birth control and the other um, drug I was taking. I just was like, this is helping right now and it will help. But as soon as I stop, it's back. And I had no like, you know, so that's just really nice to hear. Okay. And and the truth is like, you can use different modalities to all do the same thing. You can do birth control to help regulate your hormones. You can use topical medications to prevent breakouts. You can like, I would say it all matters. Yeah. Okay. One, That's like any, good to hear. any one thing doesn't do it all. Just like yeah. one product isn't this miracle product. It's, it's a lifestyle of things mm-hmm. and just kind of stand them, do, do a little of everything and know that it's going to happen. So, um, oh, what wow. I can do, and this is up to you, what, what you want, but I can follow up with an email and, and link the products into the email and say, okay, this is, this is the routine I recommended. These are the products I recommended. And here's the YouTube link on how to apply. And like, I can list everything in. I'm going to do that anyway. Um, If you know, for sure you wanted to do product, um, actually, you know what, it's, it's better if I link it, I can always call you and do it on the back end If you want, If if you know, for sure you want the product, I can also just call you and call you separate right after we get off the virtual and go through that too. It's whatever's comfortable for you. Okay. Um, I probably would do the links if that's okay. And I just, it's like an online order Yeah. or I guess would calling me make it go like faster or could I just click the link? No. Okay. I mean, it's one and the same. It's whatever's convenient for you. The truth is like, if you do click on the link, it'll give you the opportunity to be like, let me read about the product. Let me see about the ingredient. Like it, it, yeah. as a consumer, because I, again, I had acne. So I know what it's like being on the opposite end when people are like pushing yeah. product, right? I like to know that I'm not being pushed and I like to see the product and I like to see the ingredients and how to apply because it's all listed there. And if you do decide to purchase online on our site, you would plug in your credit card and uh, home address and mm-hmm. we'll ship it right away. Today's what day is today? Tuesday? Tuesday. Yes. Yeah. So depending on when your order comes in, we would ship it out that day or the next day, whenever you USPS comes by to pick it up. So uh, either way, either way, whether I take the other, I call you to make it easier Mm -hmm. or you click a link either way within 24 hours, we'll get the, the products processed if you chose to do it. Okay. But either way, it's just information that alone will do a lot for you. So, yeah. Okay. I'll probably do that, but Thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, and if you, if we hang up and you follow up and you're like, Oh, I forgot to ask her this one question. Obviously you have my email now, so we can go back and forth, but give me probably about 10 minutes to create that follow-up and the routine and everything, but I'll send it to you. And thanks again for letting me record this. That's so awesome. Oh yeah, of course. Of course. Oh, go ahead. I'm just, I'm getting used to like being on camera. It's just a weird thing for me. So thank you. Have you been starting to do more of these? Like as, as I think I'm getting more comfortable with them. Mm-hmm. Like I'm focusing on you and I know it's on, but I'm like, oh, I forget it. I'm not going to think yeah. about it. You know, yeah. I think it's more has to do with like, oh, I got to tag things and I got to edit, like make the screen different size. Cause of the, I think that's the old person in me is like, ah. yeah, no, <laughs> oh, yeah, I understand. Not an old person thing. I, I get it. Just it's, a, it can a be lot. a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. but, um, I'm in, I enjoy the process. So yeah. plus it, it keeps me, yeah. working well, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I appreciate yeah. that. Okay. Well, thank you so much You're for welcome. everything. I'm really excited about this and I'm hopeful too, because 
I've seen a lot of people go through this process. I've done this for a long time. People who are into it will clear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You and I am. To me. So yeah. 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 Okay. 